So. <clears throat> now we will continue with the second order system. Okay. Section three, second order system. Can you hear me now? Okay. And so, <coughs> in a second order system, we have this kind of system B divided by S square plus A S plus B. And we can generate the CS, okay? And so we have two derivative term or two poles at CE, okay? Characteristic equation, okay? And then <coughs> we can revise the whole system just like this one. We have a system in here and we have the pole zero plot and we have a response okay firstly in the system of a we have the one as the unit step response in here and for example if we choose the nine s square plus nine s plus 9 we can generate the c s in here and so if we look at for the what for the roots of these terms and then we have the real and imaginary part of these terms in here and minus 7 8 5 and minus 1 14 can be given in here and so what's the response in time for this system for the CT. For example, if we have this kind of system and then we can close the values of the what, the one to this kind of signal. Okay? And so the CT is equal to what the one plus one dot exponential seven dot eight five T plus one dot one and exponential over 1 14 t can be given in here okay this is called the overdamped system and we have only a e over minus a times t this kind of system contains only what the exponential term uh, 1 that 70 this is the response uh, the solution of the this transfer function this is coming from the solution it's an arbitrary number right now okay summit then okay and so <coughs> if we choose the what the one divided by s our system as a nine divided by s square plus two s plus nine and cs can be given in here and so we have the pole zero representation with the what the minus one and this minus one creates two poles at what j times square root of eight and minus j times square root of eight okay and so in the CT graph 
we have the water T and CT which is given in the word for the last response we have just kind this oscillation situation for the 1.0 this is the final values of these terms okay and so we have at this time to what in the solution exponential term and cosine term okay we have an oscillation in here okay this is called the underdamped response <clears throat> okay and so <clears throat> if we are going to with the another system just like this one the response can also be given in here okay and so if you are using or generating the second order system with the terms of the watt at the C is equal to the watt the 1s and 9 divided by s square 9 see that we have the we don't have the s term in here just like this one and so we can generate the cs in here and so the poly zero curve is at the what these terms okay j3 minus and j3 okay <clears throat> and so this generates the response of the r system with the what with the oscillation case we don't go to what the infinity or zero but we can oscillate around to what the one okay and so this is called the undamped response or the system and we have only cosinus value at the what at the time response characteristics okay or we can build the system in terms of the what the critically damped in here just like this one s square 6s plus 9 generates the cs output value in here and so we have a two poles in here at the same place minus 3 and minus 3 right and so this generates in time response to do what to these terms just like this one okay one and so the solution of this term ct is equal to what one minus three t e over minus three minus e minus three just remember the differential equations and so this is the r response and then this is called the critically damped condition okay and so we have the e over minus 80 and e minus 80 times t values which is given in here okay <clears throat> and so these are the type of the water second order system it's a generalization of the water oscillation uh, exponential terms for the what for the system response and so we can define the any response based on this conversation or the this system and so either our system is cricket critically damped or undamped or underdamped or overdamped okay we don't have the any other what the system based on this information and so how can we generalize these conditions in here firstly we should look at to the what the general second order system definition okay so in a second order system we can define the transient response of the system just like the first order one using the two coefficients while first order we have the one coefficients for example in the first order system we have the one root one pole and so this pole is equal to the water time constant but in the second order system we have two time constants okay we can generalize it in the what 
in this domain and so first order system yields to the what the gs is equal to the what the b divided by s plus a right and so this generates the what the b e over a t okay or this creates the what the b a t times 1 divided by t or 1 divided by t is equal to the what the a right this is the general solution for the what the first order system okay and so how can we define the second order one second order system in order to define it we need to define two new concepts the natural frequency <clears throat> and the damping ratio okay but what is that these two concepts the natural response or the frequency is a frequency of the system which is called the oscillation energy form for this system and damping ratio is defined with what the loss energy just like c value in the what mck system mass spring damper system okay and so this is equals to the what ratio of the exponential decay frequency for the oscillation and divided by the natural frequency and so this uh, definition is maybe complex but I can explain everything which is given in here okay we will drive it <coughs> just now so for the second order system we can write to the what the gs is equal to the what the b s square plus a s plus b right these are the definition okay and so if we don't have the any damping ratio just remember the undamped system we must write the what the s square plus b because of this creates to the what the two imaginary root at this system which is what which is the oscillation of the system in the time response okay but this is not the case because we have the a dot s term is in here okay and so we have a root just like this one s plus a divided by two a square minus 4b divided by 2 right and we have also s a divided by 2 minus a square 4b divided by 2 okay these are the two roots for this system or this transfer function okay and so for the zeta or the natural or the damping ratio of the system we can define this system based on the what these terms but just see that this is the root of the what the j square root of b times s minus j square root of b right this is the presentation of this term and so this root represents the these terms okay and so zeta is defined with the what the exponential decay frequency is the loss frequency for this system and so we have also a natural frequency of this system okay and so exponential decay frequency is directly related to what uh, this sigma value divided by omega n omega n this definition of the natural frequency just remember that we have the real plane with the values of the sigma value and so the absolute values of this term is equals to the what to this one and so what is real in this part this is the real root and so we should write it right now and so a divided by 2 omega n okay this is the definition of the what are zeta value okay because this real parts always diminish the energy because the root is given in the what the minus a2 this is a negative okay and so at each time this system is oscillate but at that time is always decay 
in here just like this one and so this is also what the time constant of this part or the real part of this part and then we can define the zeta is equal to the what the or a is equal to the what a is equal to the 2 dot zeta dot omega n okay in our response right and so how can we define the natural frequency this omega n value just remember this that this gs for the undamped system b s square plus b and so we have the two roots in here just like this one square root b s minus j square root b okay and so how can we define these terms just remember that this is the oscillation part of this plane right this is the imaginary part right and so this oscillation is directly represents to the what to our natural frequency which means that if we have the vn is equal to the what the square root of b or omega n square is equal to what the b right because it's the oscillation part of the rs plane and so we can define the natural frequency based on the what the imaginary axis which is given in here just like this one right it only contains the energy of the what the frequency oscillation frequency because uh, this coming from the what the definition of the these terms in the previous example we show that the this system characteristics right the overdamped because if you don't have the any roots at the what the imaginary and real axis for example if we have the real and imaginary axis and then if we have the at the left hand plane of this term as a roots in here just like this one and so we can always diminish or the loss or consumes the energy in here and so it always goes to zero or the sum steady state values of these terms but if we have this kind of system we have only roots at the what at the imaginary axis which is calling to what the frequency axis or which is the water oscillation axis and so if we don't have the any root at the real plane and then we always oscillate in the system okay and so what about this this term is the second term this a type times s is directly related to what the loss energy but the last term is equals or related to the what the frequency or the oscillation energy okay muhammad yes the, the b term is goes or makes the oscillation in the system okay but if i had the this coefficients in here and then i can generate to the what to the real root just like this one minus a divided by two okay otherwise we don't have the any real root in here okay and so if this is the case we can write to the what the gs is the what we can retranslate with the b with this one omega n square and s square plus we can write the this term instead of a in here q zeta omega n s plus omega n square this is the what the general representation of the second order system okay this is the proof of the what second order system okay <clears throat> any question If 
there is no question and then we can write this term again in here just like this one omega n square s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square okay and so we have two poles in here with the definition of the what the minus zeta omega n plus minus omega n times zeta square minus one okay these are the roots or the poles for our system how can i generate this form generating with the what with this s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square form okay this just simple math okay but how can we apply these coefficients in here just see that we can select the zeta s zero and then we can generate the poles at the what at only imaginary axis right j omega n because we have the zero value in here and so this yields the what the this number and so at the step response or the output response we have the what this response ct just like this one right and so this is what the selection of the zeta as equal to the what the zero okay and so what is this this is the undamped response of our system because this creates it because zeta is, is equal to the zero and then this the second term removes and then we have only to what the imaginary poles at what at the characteristic equation which is the denominator of this gs okay or if you select the zeta is equal to what or the between the zero and the one and so we have the what the real and im in here and so we have minus zeta omega n it's a real part of this root and so we have also j omega n minus zeta square in here and j omega n minus one square root in here just like this one because the we have a uh, this value in here and so this represents to the what the negative value and so this this j is going to what the head of this equation and so one minus zeta square is the absolute values of these terms okay and so we have two roots in here just like this one and so we have obtained to the what the ct is equal to the what just like this one okay and so we have the final value in here with a t and so this is called the underdamped response of the r system okay and so what about if i choose the zeta is equal to the one if we choose the zeta is equal to the one and so we have this plane in here just like this one and then we have the two poles at the same place in here minus zeta omega n and minus zeta omega n okay and so what's the output of this term in the time domain which we have the what the critical depth right see this is the critical depth right and so we can condition our system by selecting to the what to the only terms of the what this zeta value right and so if we select the proper zeta or the damping ratio of our system and then we can condition the output or the time response of this system in the second order general form okay this is the basic idea for the what for our generation of the time response in control theory okay any question yes
this is the condition of the what more than one no so this is the overdamped system if the zeta is greater than one and uh, so we have two root in here just like this one imaginary plane in here and so we have one root in here just like this one minus omega n zeta square minus one and we have also another root in here zeta omega n plus omega n zeta square one okay and so the r response is just like this one over damped system okay it's the over damped okay we have the only two roots at the real plane and so we don't have the any oscillation in here just look at or just examine that this pole diagram this pulse tells us the condition of the system in the time response because if we have using to what the frequency domain and so we don't need to go to the t infinity okay and so we can just examine these coefficients and the placement of this s plane and so we will analyze or evaluate the system of the response okay yes but the damping is directly related to the what the oscillation part because if we have higher damping ratio and then we need to say that this damping is greater than one and so the whole the oscillation is removed from the system okay if you don't have the any damping ratio and so the r system is always oscillated okay which means that the oscillation is eliminated using the damping ratio just remember that if we have the mass spring damper system and so if we have the spring and mass and so we have to what always oscillation because the spring stores to the what the potential energy okay and so if i add the damping ratio as a c damper coefficients and then this system generates the water time response just like this one okay yes if we have a system is a good system calling the good system uh, still we can we can drive the third order or fourth order examples but adding the higher order poles in this system i will show that the example of the third rd but we just only condition of the what the second order system we can formalize the second order system but not the third one or the fourth one but we can manipulate the this third order and the fourth order system in applications i will show that okay so <clears throat> if this is the case and then if the specification of the system are provided and then we can design the output response by manipulating to the what the zeta and omega n okay and so if i design the zeta and omega n value and so we can set the or the overshoot values or the settling time or the rise time or the peak time for our system okay and so for example a customer can say that uh, we need to what the 30 percent overshoot with the ratio of the what the setting time four seconds and rise time must be one second and the peak time is the what the one dot two or zero dot five seconds and so we can design the proper system based on this information but how we can use the under damped condition in order to what in order to design this system specification okay because 
if we are using these nominations and then we can design the R system based on this information. But how? Firstly, we should write the, another topic of the R lesson under damped second order system. How can we design the R zeta and omega n? Or this is basically determines what the zeta and omega n. And so zeta and omega n creates the what the R poles and zeros in R system. And so if I choose the proper values of the zeta and omega n, and we can design the R desired time response for a given system. Okay? For so for the under damped system. Cs can be defined with what the omega n square divided by s times s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square. Where is coming from this s? Just say it. This is the what unit step, right? Because we generalize the whole the solution. based on what this normalized graph and so if i apply the unit step function to this diagram and so i can also write or design the r normalized graph for the output in the what in the second order system okay and so the r response must be equal to what k1 divided by s plus k2 s plus k3 divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square right and so this is the unit response or forced response and so this is a transient response or natural response just see that the analogy with the first order system in the second order system we have this condition okay and so this is the transient response or the natural response of this system okay and so how can we draw this section or generate the r parameters in here just like this one or just like in the first order one we have this condition in here and so we can write or draw the R second order response just like this one. Okay. And so we can build the what? The final response as a CF. Okay. These are the under -damped second order response for a given this diagram. Okay. So just remember that for the first order we have the what one time constant in here with the what 0 0.1 cf right this is the final values of these terms and so for example if i choose the what this is the 0 0.9 cf and so what's the values of this term this is the rise time right from our definition okay and so if I choose the what, the another indice in here, just like this one, this is equal to the 98 CF, or we have 98% of the final value, which is assigned with the what? Settling time, right? T settling. Just remember the first order. Settle time, rest, setting time. And so we have also a C max value in here. From the what? From the CF, right? <coughs> this is what? And this is the peak time. T peak, right? These are general definition for the what under or the second order system response for a given these terms 
And so we can condition the whole the system based on this information. And so we can find the what the percentage OS value, overshoot value, TR value, and TS value based on these informations, right? But how can we do that? Firstly, just remember this case, and so in order to find out to what the TP peak time. What's the meaning of peak? I can draw the small depiction of this term in here, and so this is the max value, this is the CF value, C max is in here, and T peak is, is given in here. Obtaining the TP obtain from C dot T because it's the peak value, and so we should, we just use the water derivative term in here to define this parameter, which is given here, and so we need to look at the first zero value because it's the peak value. Just remember the theory of the what the dot operator, and so if we take a derivative of the CT, and then we can reach to the what the first zero to what to find out the maximum values is in here, okay? And so we just take the Laplace transform of this term, and so which is equal to the what the omega n square to zeta omega n s plus omega n square right because it's the unit step response just remember that we have a one s term in here with the integral term or the unit step term and so if we take a derivative and so this term is removed from there okay and so how can we use this information and so this function is rewritten just like that s plus zeta omega n square plus omega n square minus zeta square okay we can write it no it, it does not gives the minimum because we have a maximum in the over damped system okay the minimum values of at the zero but the first time we have a one curvature in here one returning value is in here which is the zero okay this is just kind of these terms okay ct dot it's just like that sum it so and ct dot is equal to the what in time domain response we have this solutions times minus theta omega n t and sinus omega and square root this term and so and so the inverse Laplace transform gives us the these values okay and so this is cannot be equal to zero because the, we have a real number in here and so we don't have the any zero values and so this must be zero in here and so in order to generate what the sinus pattern as a zero and then omega n square root z square t must be equal to the what the n pi okay and so t peak time can be inferred from this notation just like that omega n times one square z square because which is our form for the what is general second order systems okay and so this t is assigned to the t peak and so this n must be taken for the what the one because it's the first derivative okay this is the general formulation of the what obtaining the t peak time but based on the what the omega n and zeta values okay do you understand how we can drive this equation this is simple because no the we assign n to one in here because this is the first zero term okay t is just like which is given in here we cannot define to what as a zero because we don't have the any term in here okay and so this sinus term must be zero 
And so, this omega n times square root minus zeta square times t, which is equal to what? n times pi. Because if we assign to pi in here, and then we can have the what? The zero value. Okay? And so, if I choose the 1 or 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, at every case, this sinus creates the what? The zero. Okay? And so, this t converts to what? The t peak time, because this peak is equal to the what? At the derivative term to zero. And so, this t peak is equal to the what? Pi divided by omega n times square root minus 1 zeta square. Okay? Hüsamettin. This is how we can generate the t peak time. Okay? And so, let's take a break and then uh, we can generate or formalize or the proof to what the settling time and overshoot value at the last session. Okay?